God's discipline. As Christians, we must not conform to this world or we will eventually be disciplined by the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Gene. The key phrase in this principle is being conformed to the world. And in terms of the children of Israel, they were conformed to this world in ways that are absolutely unbelievable. And Ezekiel is being called to literally confront all of this evil. The evil that existed in Jerusalem and the evil that was also continuing in the lives of these people that had been taken into Babylonian captivity. If you go down to verse 5 of chapter 5, you have a reference to Israel's wickedness. Notice, this is what the Lord God says. I have set this Jerusalem in the center of the nations with countries all around her. Now that says something about God's choice of this city, which we call the holy city, which, by the way, will exist for eternity when God creates a new Jerusalem. But God, in His sovereign ways, chose this city of all places in the whole world, in the center of the nations, with countries all around her. And of course, we know today that's expanded around the whole world. But she, that is Jerusalem, has rebelled against my ordinances with more wickedness than the nations. In other words, the nations that surround them. And against my statutes, more than the countries that surround her. I chose Jerusalem to be an example of holiness, of righteousness. But my people are engaging in more wickedness than the pagans, those in the world. For her people have rejected my ordinances and have not walked in my statutes. And so Ezekiel is called to proclaim a message of repentance, even among those that have been taken already into Babylonian captivity through that second deportation. Now, notice what he's asked to do. This is unbelievable. Now remember, he's living in a house like a little city, and he's to come outside of his house and build a model, really a model of Jerusalem. And, and basically, what he's to do is throw stuff at it, besieging a brick and an iron plate. And the illustration there is, Jerusalem will be besieged and taken into captivity. And of course, we know that happened in the third deportation. He was supposed to do something else in verses 4 to 8. He was to lie on his side outside of his house. And to me, this is almost incomprehensible because if you look at the numbers, he was to lie outside his house for 390 days. But that was to illustrate the wickedness of Israel. Those numbers represent the northern kingdom that was taken into uh, captivity by the Assyrians. But he was supposed to then do another 40 days to lie on his side outside of his house to illustrate what happened to Judah, that is the southern kingdom, that are going to be taken into ultimate captivity. They had become a part of that through the second deportation, but the worst is yet to come. Now, I'm sure he didn't lie out there all day, all night, but it was a process of time. And by the way, what that demonstrates is God's grace showing that through this man. Judgment is coming. And God didn't just do it on one day or two days or three days. He did it day after day after day through this man to illustrate the judgment is coming. He, he, he's actually bearing the iniquity, it says in the text, of both Israel and Judah. Thirdly, he was to ration his food, which indicated that famine was going to come. He was to shave his head and his beard and divide it into three parts, and ultimately one part would fly into the wind 
and ultimately be burned with fire. In other words, this is what's going to happen to Jerusalem. And so here we have these incredible things that Ezekiel was called to do in order to communicate to these people judgment was coming. Now, frankly, I'm glad that God doesn't call us, <laughs> most of us, to do that in order to communicate to the evil people around us the judgment is coming. But that shows the extent of this situation. And here's Ezekiel living among them, going through these rituals. And he paid a serious sacrifice to try to communicate with these people that judgment was coming. And that raises, a, I think, a, a very penetrating question that we all need to ask ourselves, and that is, is it possible for those of us who have been saved by God's grace to take our free gift of salvation for granted and to engage in sin that even the world rejects? You know, we have a New Testament illustration of that. Now remember, this passage says that God chose Jerusalem to be holy and they were more wicked than the people around them. God called the, Corinthi called the Corinthians to be holy. But notice what Paul had to write to them. Now remember, they were converted out of horrible paganism. Corinth was one of the most immoral cities in the whole Roman world. But after these people came to Christ, Paul had to write back to them and say, it is widely reported that there is sexual immorality among you, you Corinthians, and the kind of sexual immorality that is not even tolerated among the Gentiles. A man is living with his father's wife. In other words, a form of incest. And notice what Paul went on to say. And you are inflated with pride instead of being filled with grief so that he who has committed this act might be removed from your congregation. Now that gives you an insight into what kind of immorality the Corinthians came out of. They were even bragging about this. And I don't understand it completely. Perhaps they were saying, see, God has forgiven it. We can do anything we want. I'm not quite sure of their rationale, but Paul had to deal with that kind of sin. So this isn't something we see just in the Old Testament. We see it here in a New Testament church. Now, thank God that as a result of Paul's letters, the Corinthians begin to change and really begin to reflect God. And re because they were Christians, they're called saints, but they had to grow. They were carnal and had to grow into spiritual maturity. And so that raises a, a question that relates to this principle, and that is, in what ways have you seen God discipline a community of believers that continues to violate His will? And of course, the continuity there is that God judged Judah. Ultimately, God's hammer fell. His love was extended, 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 extended. Ultimately, it happened through that third deportation. Jerusalem fell. It was burned with fire. And the rest of the children of Israel and Judah were taken into Babylonian captivity. That's the continuity as far as this principle is concerned. Because God will discipline his people who continue in disobedience. When I try to think of an illustration, I, I think we have to be extremely careful. I think of liberalism, for example, churches that have forsaken the Word of God, no longer teach that the Bible is the Word of God, that Jesus Christ is indeed God in the flesh. They do not teach the gospel of Jesus. They just teach a philosophy of life. In our day and age, those churches are diminishing. They're going downhill. They're not growing. But on the other hand, there are churches that claim to be Christian that are growing by leaps and bounds, and yet if you study some of the things that are being taught, they are not really in harmony with a lot of what God teaches in the New Testament. It's more the power of positive thinking than it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
And so when you look at that, I come back to the fact that I have to be very, very cautious in answering the question that I've raised. Only God knows the truth in relationship to these situations. But we can be sure that this principle is true. God, in his own sovereign ways, I believe, will indeed carry out this principle. As Christians, we must not conform to this world, or we will eventually be disciplined by the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice I use the word disciplined, because there's a difference between being judged and punished and being disciplined. Discipline comes because God loves us. And in the book of Hebrews, it talks about the fact that God is our Heavenly Father. And as an earthly father disciplines his children when they disobey him, so God loves us so much that when we walk out of his will, he will indeed discipline us in order to what? Bring us back into his will so that we might serve the Lord Jesus Christ.